Hello, Flickering Myth family, and welcome to our channel. My name is EJ, and I am so excited to dive into this video. I am now about to review what looks to be my first favorite movie of 2024. We are discussing the movie Femme. How do you serve your dish of revenge? Is it something you serve cold? Is it something you serve with a side of lust? These are the conversations I had while watching Femme. This is the most brutal revenge movie I have seen in quite some time. It's hard hitting. I am going to like trigger warning the hell out of this movie because I have seen some of the letterboxed reactions. I've seen some of the negative reviews of this. It seems like this is traumatic, hard hitting. Is it too much trauma? Is it just, you know, is this the right conversations to be having? Is this the right route to take this story? This is a uh, a hard hitting piece. It is not for everyone. For me, I thought this was a a crazily accurate, a crazily true personal story. This movie hit hard in ways I never expected to. But I will say some of the conversations about how brutal the violence can be in this movie, it's not a lot. It's, you know, it kind of uh, bookends the story of this for sure. But it, it's it's graphic. It's not easy. It's, you know, depicting a queer black man getting brutalized. It's not it's it's not for everyone. So if you're definitely not into these type of movies, like a revenge tale, you know, giving a little bit of I spit on your grave, giving me a little bit of like, you know, that 2000s revenge era that we had to not pure Kill Bill, but you know, those revenge stories that we often get told. I mean, old boy, these are hard hitting stories about revenge and they're messy and they're supposed to be and we're supposed to expose a lot of the good and bad of humanity. The hero that we're supposed to be following the route that they're going, is it worth it? Is revenge truly going to be the route that they want? Is this what the character of Jules really wants? Is it revenge? Do they start following in love? The, the conversations are had in this movie. I have not walked away from a project in quite some time where I was so like disheveled after. Like I, this movie left me a mess. It's, it's not easy, but I also really love the story. I think it, there's a moment of in this thing where I was like, Oh, do I want a happy ending for these two people who aren't the best people ever? Like, it's it's hard. It is truly crazy. And I think the directors, the writers, the actors all came together to make this feel so organic, so real. Again, I'm not going to get into my personal life, but stories like this, stories of dealing with, like, the Preston character, it's real. The people like this exist. Situations like this happen. There's probably happening right now to someone down the street from me. Like, truly, it's... It's real. This story is so accurate to so much of what queer people deal with. The the need for revenge after being attacked, the, the, the route that you go for revenge. Do you start regretting that revenge? Do you start having feelings? Or was it your whole plan to make you feel this way and then snatch it all at the end? This movie has so much going for it. Femme is truly one of those movies that I want to watch again, but also I can't sit through it again because it's so hard hitting. Like, Oh my goodness, what a wild experience this was. Nathan Stewart Jarrett plays Jules, while George McKay plays Preston. You may know Nathan from Misfits. He's been in a couple other things. He was in the Candyman remake. Uh, uh, George, you may know him from 1917. He's been in a bunch of projects as well. These are two amazing British actors that I was blown away by. Two people I already, like, I, you know, love and admire, but my love and my admiration just went through the roof. The character of Preston... I know this man. I have dealt with this man. I have been in situations like this. It's so accurate. Again, maybe I don't know the the chavy, you know, British vibes of him. Maybe like they're like, no, George McKay is not this character at all. But I felt like he lived it. I understood his motivations, his point of view, the character. It felt real. Same thing with Jules. I mean, Jules is this wonderful queer character that is so layered and going through so much and I, I don't often see a character like Jules that feels it feels fleshed out and real but also not there to feel like a perfect caricature for you to feel comfortable with. I think a lot of times with LGBT stories we often want the audience who maybe isn't a gay person, a trans person, anything like that to see it and feel at ease. Oh, I know what's happening. This is easy. The Will and Grace syndrome. Will and Grace put itself into millions of homes in the 2000s and everyone was like, oh, I know gay people. And then they see a John Waters movie and then they're like, what the hell is this? This is kind of 
walking that line. Jules is a character that I don't think is a mainstream, family-friendly, queer character, but as somebody who's been in this community my entire life, goodness, Jules is a person. I really love how believable they were. I believed Jules. I believed Preston. I believed Preston's friends. I believed Jules's friends. Like, everyone felt like real people. There was fleshed out characters, maybe not the most three-dimensional people. This is a, you know, quick, straightforward story. Revenge It's mostly about Jules and Preston in this one arc of revenge. But, you know, so we're, we don't really have a lot of time to, you know, I don't know Jules's backstory. You know what I mean? You don't really get a lot of that. But there's a lot of things implied. There's a lot of things under the surface, especially with Preston's character. I understood, and again, a character I do not agree with their stance their their uh their nazi coded vibes i i don't agree with this character but i definitely understood them and it felt like a real person but jules i mean i cannot nathan stewart jarrett my goodness jules is going to live on with me as a character that i i just i I cannot believe they crafted this wonderful portrayal and the chemistry, the toxic chemistry between Preston and Jules. Nathan and George, I felt like loved each other, hated each other, wanted to kill each other at all times. It's again, toxic chemistry. Sometimes people can have good chemistry that, you know, the two actors are working well together, but their scenes are gross and toxic and fighting and evil and mean. And I love seeing those those two actors play those roles very well. You know, the moments where Preston starts breaking down a little bit you're like oh is there hope is there a glimmer of chance and I, I i want that and i want you know maybe i wanted the jewels and preston to just work out everything in the end and everything's perfect but that's not how life works but they made me believe that oh my goodness what a, again, powerful storytelling from two amazing actors. Again, the whole cast is fine. We don't really spend a lot of time with them, but these two central performances are some of my favorites I've seen all year. Ng Chun Ping and Sam H. Freeman are the directors of this project. Two filmmakers, I have no idea. Ping and Freeman, new to me. My goodness, thank you for introducing yourselves to me, for crafting the story, for the cinematography, the editing, the sound design, the soundtrack, Central C in this movie. I was just like, oh, I know that rapper. Like, again, I really love how authentic this feels, how true to life, how modern this feels. These two directors, Ping and Freeman, I really think are onto something here. Do I want to see them make more movies like this or do I want to see them evolve? I don't know. I liked the indie flair of this, that it wasn't, you know, the most bombastic production and it was gritty and on the streets but I, I i want them to evolve and get bigger as filmmakers but there's there's a a rawness to this film that i do i don't want to see anyone lose especially the actors but specifically these directors my goodness they are so good in this i mean their their talent their way of sleek filmmaking their way of strong visuals backed by good dialogue a conversation we're having with Denis Villeneuve with like you know oh I watch movies for visuals I don't care about the dialogue I like good visuals too but I want to feel my characters I want good monologues good back and forth between people and that's what this delivered I really loved their direction I love the writing I loved again the technical side this movie looks really good for its lower budget for where they shot so many night scenes you know and the the cinematography I love the way Nathan looks, I mean, dark-skinned actors have had such a struggle in this industry being properly lit, looking as gorgeous as they can, and they did that here. Everyone looks as good as they can. Even in scenes that are gross and grimy, you're like, God damn it, this looks so good. Like, this is such a well-made movie that uh, Freeman and Ping need to work together for a very long time, make movies like this for us. Not just for gay people, but for everyone. I think that's what I like about Femme. This is a very specific queer story that is meant for a certain audience, but I think a lot of people can fall into the story and learn something new, get a new point of view, get a new perception, because this movie really offers that. That's a good direction. It allows you to enter this world. It may not be your world, but it allows you to enter it and understand it pretty well. Well, that is it for my review of Femme. I, oh my goodness, this movie will sit with me for some time. Out of 2024, I can see this being a top 10 contender for the rest of the year, though I know a bunch of people saw it in 2023. For me, I'm counting my USA release when it was sent to me, when I got to do my interviews. It is a 2024 movie for me, so I will say this is one of my favorite movies of the year and a must-see for people who are able to handle the story and who are willing to check this out. What did you guys think of my review? What do you think of this movie? If you've had a chance to see it already, share your thoughts. Don't spoil anything, but let's get your feelings out there. Share your thoughts, subscribe, thumbs up, all that jazz, and let's talk about Femme right down below.